Today I'm going to share with you a uh, fixture uh, that was designed by my dad, Mr. Sawdust, way back in the uh, 70s. And uh, it's one that he didn't share in his book, for whatever reason, I'm not sure, but uh, How to Master the Radial Arm Saw was written by him. A very comprehensive book on the radial arm saw, something I'm sure anyone would get a lot out of, uh, including ways of uh, mitering perfect miters with uh, flat moldings and boards. This fixture that I'm about to show you is something that he used an awful lot uh, for doing shadow box frames and compound miters. Uh, something that he didn't put in the book and I don't know if he was saving it for later, but I'm gonna share it with you today. This is the jig, okay? I'm gonna put this into place in place of the fence that uh, would normally be here. I'm going to align it with the blade to where it's uh, coming through the fence. I can adjust these fences in and out. I'm going to clamp it with these uh, thumb screws. And a, a simple explanation. When you have a perfect 90 degree square even if your saw is not perfect, and this one does happen to be pretty darn perfect, uh, it doesn't matter if this is out of hair because for every angle, there's a complementary angle to equal 90 degrees. This is a saying I've used time and time again. It applies to so many things that we do when we try to make excuses for machinery that's not perfect. You can still make a perfect box or frame by doing it this way, okay? This is called the Flying V jig that, uh, again, Mr. Sawdust designed this. Uh, my brother Bruce, uh, out of the kindness of his heart, measured his, he has the original, measured his and gave me drawings, did some beautiful pen and ink drawings of, of the dimensions and how to build this fence. So here we go. So these are just crummy little uh, lumberyard moldings, but they'll serve the purpose for this demonstration. When you cradle a molding into a uh, jig like this, you want to think about uh, if you were doing this as a crown molding, this will do crown moldings beautifully, uh, what is the wall of the room and what is the ceiling of the room? In this case, this fence here is the wall and the platform is the ceiling, okay? So when I make this miter and I flip this over and it becomes a crown molding, this is the wall and this is the ceiling, okay? This does not apply for a picture frame, but if you were to be doing a uh, crown molding, it does apply. So when you have this cradled in place to where the flats are laying nicely on the wall and the ceiling, you then measure uh, for a filler piece to be able to hold this in position, right? So I'm going to cut all of my left hand miters all at once, okay? Because the dimension of the length doesn't matter. We're just going to cut the ends off each one. Okay, here we go.
Okay, so that's all of our left hand miters. Now the second cut, the right hand miter, does count. It uh, needs to be a specific length, whatever you choose. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, uh, this piece, we're going to drop the fence back that uh, is going to keep us from cutting these to a, a length that we're, we're hoping for. It, you know, measure it out, mark it, wherever it is, and then come up with a stop. We won't go into stop designs right now, but right now we're just going to come up with something that works for what we're doing here. It's something, something simple. It's just a stop. So now we're going to cut our right hand miters. Same cradle, right? It wants to be cradled perfectly in both directions. So now we're going to fire it up again. Again, this is a random length. I'm going to stress to you now that you, you never reach back here. You have wooden fingers or your pencil to reach back there with. never make a uh, square frame. You just want the corners to be square. Again, wooden fingers. And now I'm going to change this. I'm going to have a different dimension for my other two pieces. Very random here. four pieces with right and left hand miters, very, very random dimensions. But when we go to put them together, we'll find that uh, this frame ends up being perfectly square. Now I can spend five minutes and glue this up, but you'll find out for yourself that this is perfectly square. Okay, so this is, a, this is a tried and true method of perfect shadow box angle miters, right and left hand, using the Mr. Sawdust flying wing jig. So the little frame that we just uh, produced, this is not glued, it's just uh, put together with some pinch clamps. If you can get a close up of it, you'll see that there, these are airtight miters. There was no fudging, there was no messing with it. This is what we're looking to looking to get in uh, in any form of mitering is, uh, and it's one of the most difficult things to do, believe it or not, uh, in woodworking is to get a beautiful, uh, tight mitered frame. Now this this frame is uh, just done with lumberyard pine. You saw how simple it was with my flying wing setup. Originally, the flying wing jig was devised and designed by my dad 40 years ago when he made this picture frame. This wasn't originally intended to be a frame for his portrait, but that's where it ended up. The uh, miters on this frame, 40 years later, look closely, they're perfect. This thing has not moved. Uh, it's been perfect from day one, done on this same flying wing jig. 
In his book on page 157, he describes the uh, making of the molding for this frame. The mitering is all done one piece at a time and wrapped around and wrapped around. There's 10 pieces of molding to make up this framework. Okay, expertly done, of course, and uh, just a gorgeous frame, very deep. Very deep. The sides are dental. Nice deep portrait frame. So there's a Delphi, D-E-L-P-H-I, forum that is uh, dedicated to the radial arm saw, called the Radial Arm Saw Forum. Okay? This forum is hosted by a terrific guy, Paul Reiki. And, uh, Paul has been hosting this for many, many years, and the uh, forum is dedicated to the old Mr. Sawdust School uh, that my dad had way back. And um, it's a, a place where you can go and get as much information as you need to restore a radial arm saw. I should clarify a DeWalt radial arm saw. Uh, if you need to restore one, rewire one, uh, whatever you want to do, or learn how to use one, these guys are all experts in that field and uh, very helpful. And they will welcome you into that forum with any questions that you may have. So enjoy that. That's, that's really a, a nice thing for all of us DeWalt enthusiasts. The plans for this flying wing jig, as drawn by my brother Bruce, ex expertly done pen and ink drawings, will be available on the Mr. Sawdust School website coming real soon, uh, along with other plans uh, that are coming in the future. So stay tuned, we've got a lot more to come. Thank you.